Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today we're going to go back to the basics, going to record some vocals and talk about specifically how to hear yourself well when recording. If you don't struggle with this, this video is probably not for you. But if you find yourself, you're recording vocals, guitar, really any instrument, and you always find you can't quite hear the thing you're recording, it's, a, it's never loud enough there's a good chance that you're trying to solve this problem in the wrong way. I'm going to help you out here. So today, we're going to dive into that, and I'm going to record a vocal. So here's a song in Studio One. Just finished up recording this, well, tracking this with my band. We don't quite have the, uh, we just have the basic tracks, drums, bass, a couple of guitars. And what I want to do is show you specifically one way to make sure you can hear yourself when you sing. So this this all came from, I was actually working with a client at his studio and noticed when he was recording, I was kind of observing, He, I asked him, like, how well can you hear your guitar while you're recording? He said, oh, I really can't. I just play it and then go back and listen and make sure it's good. And I thought, oh, man. First of all, it was, he, it was surprising how much he was able to do working that way. Um, but we worked a system to make sure he can hear himself because it, it, there's no situation where I don't want to hear myself while recording, but especially if I'm doing vocals, I got to hear my voice real loud. Otherwise, Joe's going to sound flat and sharp and terrible all day long. So we're going to talk about how to do that today in this video. And specifically, I'm going to show you one way to do this. This is for you if you record into Studio One and you do all your monitoring from Studio One, meaning you're listening to your microphone all the way through Studio One and back to your ears. You may be thinking, what do you mean, Joe? That I just mean we're monitoring through Studio One, not hearing my voice coming back off of a mixer, which is what I have in front of me, or... Maybe your audio interface has the ability to have a mix knob where you're hearing the microphones directly from the interface blended with the playback from software. I'm going to show you the, probably the most common way people use Studio One and an easy way to solve this. And then you can take these principles and apply them if you're working in a slightly different way. But I'm just going to show this one today. All right, so here's the song. Real quickly, I'm going to hit play just to get a level, give you an idea of where the music is sitting. Because that's the music is sitting at a level that feels nice to me, and now I want my vocal to sit above that. So let's just hit play real quick coming into this section here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sing over that. That level feels pretty good. That's kind of the kind of the rough mix level of things thus far. Anyway, now let's check to see where my vocal is is so i'm going to record on this yellow vocal track which is this track right here and i'm going to hit the record button and most likely depending on how you have your settings when you hit the record button it also hits the monitor button for you and that's good because if without it you can't hear yourself through the software but with it we can hear ourselves let's see what happens when i press record testing, testing one, one two, two three. three okay did you hear how that sounded more like slapback delay than just hearing myself that's called latency. So you were hearing my voice directly, then you were hearing it coming back from Studio One, latency. The software takes time to process the audio and send it back. That's just a normal part of recording software. Um, so you need that, it needs that latency to do all the plug-in stuff that it's gonna do. But during recording, we want super, super low latency. And there's a button I'm gonna show you that will solve this problem with one click, nine times out of 10. So if you hit, you hit the, button the button and you, you hear, hear that, that latency, latency, come over here, look over to your, open up the mixer. So F3 opens up the mixer. Go to the far right-hand side. This is your main output. Sometimes people call it the master fader. And you'll notice at the bottom of the master fader, see it says main here, there's this little Z looking thing. And if we zoom, if we hover over it, it'll tell us that this is low latency monitoring. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Let's press that button and see what happens. So I press it and it goes cool and green. And then let's just go record enable this track again and let's see how it sounds. Testing, one, two, three. That latency is gone. It went from this, testing, 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 testing. to this. Testing, one, two, three. That's perfect. Now, there's still a slight difference because you're hearing my voice and then hearing me come back from Studio One. So let me mute my voice, and now you can hear it just in Studio One. Testing, one, two, three. Now, we can hear me. That's delightful. Um, and the latency is gone, which is also delightful. By the way, if that latency trick doesn't work, open up Preferences, go to Audio Setup, 
go to the audio device setting and lower this number here, device block size, down to something like 32. The lower you go, the more chances your computer kind of chokes a little bit, but go a little bit lower. You can come to the processing tab and lower the dropout protection setting to minimum or off. That makes you more prone to dropouts. But what I found, I'm not entirely sure, I'll be honest, what the green Z is doing, but I like it. It's basically, it, it disables plugins that might be causing latency, which by the way, just don't, don't record with plugins on until you know they're not causing latency, especially not like a limiter on your mix bus. Just let's just, that's just another topic for another day. Um, but this does some stuff under the hood to make sure that whatever I'm recording comes through super low latency. And by the way, I'm, I'm using a, a Studio Live USB mixer, regular old USB, not even like USB-C. It's just the old B or A or whatever it is. It's not FireWire. It's not Thunderbolt. It's just old USB-C. Um, not USB-C, USB, whatever. And, but that button allows me to get a really low latency. So that problem is solved. Now, the only problem is when we listen to my voice coming through studio one, test one, two, three, it's just really quiet and I can't hear it very well, but here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to turn up the mic preamp. So what's the mic preamp It's the place where you plug the microphone in the cable goes into, let's say your interface and there's a gain knob for that mic. You just want to turn that up to the point where it is a nice healthy signal, but not super loud. So if we look here, this is my microphone signal right now. You can't hear it, but I've, it, this is the signal. What a lot of people will think is, okay, it's not loud enough. Therefore I need to turn up my preamp level. What'll happen? Well, You'll get it a little bit louder and then it'll start clipping and then you start singing and it clips and clipped audio is the worst. You don't want to clip. This is the level that you want. This is as loud as I will ever record it. And then, okay, but what about the fact that it's not loud enough? Now here's where it gets fun. So check out what happens when I pull this fader down. Check it out. I'm still talking. The meter is still going. What does that tell me? That tells me that this meter is showing me what's coming into the channel and this fader is doing something after that, which means I can adjust the volume of the sound that I'm hearing without making it louder going to tape, so to speak. So I can turn it up here and it won't be clipping here because I'm turning it up after the fact. Let's see what that sounds like. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. Oh, interesting. So now it's a good bit louder. I still want a little more volume. So what do I do now? Turn up the preamp? No, I already told you don't do that. Um, here's what you do next. If you don't see this knob at the top of your channel, this little volume knob, come over here to the left-hand side of the mixer, click on this little wrench, and then scroll down and find a checkbox called input controls. This will, I didn't know that was shift I. Shift I turns that on and off. That's amazing. Um, it will add this little volume knob. Check out what happens now. Um, okay, we're listening to Studio One. Check, 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 check. Check it out. What, what, what's it all about? Look at it now. The the input gain here hasn't changed. I haven't increased the amount of signal being recorded to the track. Everything on this channel is happening after the fact is happening after it gets recorded, meaning I could turn this up for days. The recording won't clip. It might just get loud out here, but the recording itself is going to be fine. So those, whoops. So those are two places where we can turn up the volume. So if you've got your mix loud enough where you can hear it, and then you're mixing at a relatively conservative volume on your, your main output, so you're not clipping there, then you've got some headroom there for the vocal to go. So what I would do is I would come in and I would turn up the volume of, I'm going to turn up the volume of the trim here by like two. And then I'm just going to push this fader up all the way to plus 10. And that feels about right. That's the level that feels good to me. It's nice and loud. It's, it's above the volume of the music. It's where I can hear it over the top. And so now we can record. So let's do it. Let's hit record and see what happens. I see them, I scratch my eyes Life's creating, hypnotized Mesmerized 
that's plenty loud. Now, if it's not quite loud enough still, I've got some room. I can still goose it here another 22 dB if I wanted to. I won't need to. That's going to be plenty. If you find that you're clipping your master fader, a little bit of clipping is fine. If it's clipping a ton, then your mix is probably just too loud. Let's just turn everything down here. And you can always turn things up at your headphone knob. That's a great way to get some volume without affecting anything in the recording. Now, as a bonus, we can hear ourselves, but now it feels so dry. I want to hear it with some slapback delay. So I'm going to come in here and use my send. I've already got slapback as a part of my template. Check, check, check. check, check. check. Hey, hey. Ooh, that's, Ooh, cool. that's cool. And then, and then I, like I like singing, singing through, through. Turn that turn off for a off second. First. I like singing through some compression. I want to see if I can put fat channel on here because I think it's pretty low latency. Let's try this. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Yeah, that's not adding any latency. Let's go a little aggressive here. I just want some compression. Hey. Da -da 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 -ba -da -da. Hey, da -da 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 -ba -ba. Check, 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 check. Yeah, that feels good. Also a place where we can get a little extra volume if we want. So it's quieter when I'm talking and it gets quiet. It's louder when I'm talking and it gets quieter when I sing loud because that's what compression does. That's super interesting. We could even EQ it. One thing to remember, it doesn't matter what we do here. That's not being recorded. It's just what we hear. It's processing the audio on its way out to my headphones. So I could put a freaking red light distortion on this if I wanted to. Let's go like something like, mm, that's too much. It started to feed back from my headphones. Let's go like this. Hey, let's create and hypnotize, mesmerize. So now I've got distortion blended in as a plugin. It's green because of the, the low latency button that we pushed. It's doing something, but it's still letting the sound through. It must be running a slimmer version of it. But now we can do, do all, all of that. Of that. And now and we, now can, we record. can record. That's, That's sick. sick. Let's make, Let's this, make more this more like, like 100. 100. Check, 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 check. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. I'm going to record. record. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> See them, I scratch, scratch my, my eyes, last creating hypnotize, mesmerize, too much delay, gaslight and slap me in my face, like we can't see truth in its place, in its place. So just, just like, like that. that. Goodness gracious, just like that, it's a vocal that I'm having way more fun singing, and I haven't done anything, I haven't messed up the raw recording. I can completely change how I want to mix this vocal later. Let's turn these off and just listen to prove it. Here's the raw vocal. Oops, hang on. Here it comes. Mm -hmm. I see them, I scratch my eyes, last create and hypnotize. So it's perfectly clean, but it was also way more fun to sing too. So not only have we learned how to set the level so that you can hear it well while you're recording, let's add some fun stuff to it and make it fun to sing. And you can do this times guitar, vocal, anything. I, I encourage you not to go nuts with plugins, but for vocals especially, I've gotten to a point where like when I sing live and I'm getting it back in my in-ears or it's coming through the monitor, it's got some stuff on it, right? It's got some compression. I'm hearing it post whatever the front of house guy has done to it anyway or gal. And so I like hearing that. So I've gotten to the point where in the studio, I kind of want to hear the vocal with the stuff on it too. The same way I want to play electric guitar and hear what the amp is doing versus play it clean, record it clean, and then add the amp sound later. That's silly. So I'm more and more, I like doing this kind of thing where it's got a vibe, and so I can go, Mmm, that's, that's got, got some vibe, I kind of like, like that. that. And if and it's if a little quiet, quiet, we can always turn it up right here. here. That's, that's just fine. Then, when we're all done, turn recording off there, and then come over here and turn off the Z button. Um, and we can go back to our day, mix this thing, make it sound amazing, and probably take this and turn that down because that's going to be too loud for the mix. All right. I hope this was fun for you. I hope it's got you excited to just go record something. Go record something. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. See ya.